Broadcasting from New York City to the world, it's the G-Man Interviews. Welcome. I'm going to begin by reading an excerpt from a news report that's posted on the website MedPage Today. It states, Young American Indians and Alaska Natives, whom they refer to as AN in this article, that's A-I-A-N, have much higher rates of suicide than those of other racial and ethnic groups, according to findings of a new federal report. The findings, published by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Center for Health Statistics, found that young AN men were more than twice as likely to commit suicide as other gender or racial groups studied. Among AN young adults, there was an estimated 34.3 suicides per 100,000 population for males and 9.9 .9 suicides for females. The report noted that suicide rates for AN young adults are likely to be underestimated as a previous study found that deaths for the AN population were underreported by 30%. When researchers combined data from 2009 through 2013 for non-Hispanic black and non-Hispanic white young adults who committed suicide, firearms was the most common method used, followed by suffocation. For Hispanic, Asian slash Pacific Islander, and Asian young adults who committed suicide, suffocation was the most common method used, followed by the use of firearms. Joining me to discuss the crisis in greater detail is Pastor Leon Blunthorn Matthews author of Res Ramblings, Living on the Pine Ridge as a 21st Century Engine. The book is a collection of the pastor's newspaper columns and personal blogs spanning the past several years and provides an in-depth look at poverty, oppression, racism, and cultural struggles of Native Americans. Pastor Matthews has appeared on the show on two occasions to reveal how alcoholism, suicides, and unemployment have decimated the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Welcome back to the show, Pastor Matthews. Great to be here. The first time you were on the show, you indicated that substance abuse was a leading cause of death, depression, and despair on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Would you say they're still to blame for the enormous surge in suicides within Native American communities across the country? Or are there other factors involved that analysts and medical professionals haven't taken into consideration? I believe there is. We have to start historically. I mean, what the United States did to Native America, which is essentially created a genocide, culturally, physically, mentally, emotionally. And what they did is they tried to kill the Indian and save the man. And what's happened after that is the aftermath. So you have young Native American people that, like on Pine Ridge, where I'm a tribal member, I mean, I read this morning there were 243 attempts since 2014. And I know young people that have died. I mean, I called my son, and I was talking to him, and, and he said, four people kill themselves on one weekend. I mean, we live in a town that's between seven and 10,000 people, and four people kill themselves. And I think... A lot of the statistics are probably wrong. I mean, when I jumped on the scene in 1995, after going to college and coming back to the reservation to try to help people, what happened was, I mean, people were talking six to eight times higher than the national rate. Six to eight times higher than what Americans, how they commit suicide in Native America. Now, those statistics have, like, changed. I believe they want to softball them. Because it's epidemic. I mean, when I know people, I mean, I know, like, young professionals that are trying to kill themselves. A young lady, 30 years old, beautiful, like, awesome personality, so happy all the time, and, and, and she's struggling. And what it is is it's hopelessness created by the historical trauma that has happened to the Native Americans. I mean, most people on the East Coast, they don't know Native Americans exist, but they do their storybook form. Another section of the article stated that the 2014 report found suicide was the second leading cause of death behind unintentional injuries 
for Indian youth ages 15 to 24 residing in Indian health service areas, and the suicide death rate for this group is four times higher than the national average. Findings also show that AN young people ages 15 to 34 comprise 64% of suicides in Indian country. Now you've spent many years working with people who threatened to take their lives. Did the majority of them fall within the age range cited in the report? Yes, they did. A little personal story. On July 4th, there were three young men coming back from the beach. They were driving into Pine Ridge Village, and they had a head-on collision. All three of the young men, and I think one of the driver of the other vehicle, died. Two were brothers. One was a first cousin. Three young men wiped out. A couple years before, their cousin could play basketball. He was, he was amazing. He was a young you know, superstar. He committed suicide. So, like, when we start thinking about, well, why are these guys out there partying and then driving within three minutes from their house, they get in a head-on collision and they die. You know, it's like a domino effect. These guys knew their cousin. He committed suicide. It's a very sad, sad story. There's a report in the news today that they're going to give $400,000 to suicide prevention for the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation for 2015 and 2016. Then October 2016, they're going to give another $400,000. And you know what? The government and the tribe, they say, oh, we're going to beautify it. We're going to give kids opportunities to, like, play softball and basketball and volleyball and, I mean, do all this. But realistically... If you don't help the emotional aspect of the historical trauma and the PTSD, the suicide will still happen. And it doesn't matter how many tournaments you can have or make flower beds. A Native American youth today has to believe tomorrow is going to get better. Indian reservations are among the poorest places in America, so access to quality medical care and mental health facilities is extremely limited. How can anyone, or any agency for that matter, begin to seriously address the crisis if educational opportunities, jobs, or other resources are virtually non-existent on the reservations? You know, that's the problem. It's not about basketball. It's not about volleyball or football or like you're building your dreams of going to some professional sport. It's about having the emotional stability in your home. I did a story like maybe seven, eight years ago about waking up as an Indian child on a Saturday morning. Everybody's, like, passed out. You wake up. There's no food in the cupboards. You're looking for food, but there's no food. Everyone's laying around because they drank till 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and, and you're hungry. And you go to school, and you, you get to eat again. And then Friday night, Saturday night comes again, and it happens again. And so to a young child, it's like, how is life going to get better if this is all I have to look forward to? And it's like the ripple effect because of what was done to Native America over the centuries. I mean, when I was like a student and I studied, well, how many people actually died in the Americas? And I thought, oh, 20 million. You know, as I became an adult, the guesstimation of how many people died since 1492 was a hundred million indigenous people because just like they cut the trees they destroyed the native communities and so like all this stuff is a ripple effect and historically we have to deal with it i mean canada is doing some things i mean america won't budge because when you're dealing with reconciliation gary when people say we want to reconcile and we have these movements to reconcile well part of that is making it right And when you get reparations, then the government says, oh, no, you're not getting any money. I mean, even though the richest gold mines in the world came out of the Indian country, I mean, they're still not willing to, like, make things right. Less than a half a million dollars, or basically $800,000 for two years, is not going to do anything. 
because we don't have jobs. I mean, we're still at 80% unemployment. So a child comes home to his parents that don't have jobs, and they can't get out of that. And I think when we talk about suicide, I mean, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I mean, spiritually, I mean, we need people to step up, to pray for the young people of Native America, because they're killing themselves, and it's a terrible thing. We need the medicine men. We chasha waka, the holy men, the holy people need to step forward and, like, help spiritually. Secondly, as a pastor, I talk about hope all the time. Let's talk about mental. I mean, you have the Internet at your fingertips, and you can control your world because of information. The problem that we face in Native America is how are we going to get our youth to believe that tomorrow is going to be a better day? I mean, I did my best. I raised my children. I affected other young people. But we need to do it at a wider scale. And I'm not sure if the government throwing money onto it is going to work. I think it has to be organic. Last time we spoke, which was quite some time ago, you said things were bad and getting much worse on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it now And what are you and members of the Tribal Council doing to try and change the situation? Well, right now, suicide, alcohol, drug abuse, I mean, it's like 10. It got that bad. Because you know what? When we talked, you heard very little of people killing themselves. I have two cousins. One shot himself with a shotgun, blew his head off, basically. Two... His sister hung herself, and I helped my uncle tear down that house piece by piece. It was cursed. That was like in the 80s. Now today, you fast forward to 2014, 2015, and kids are killing themselves. What I'm doing, I'm developing my culinary skills. And my goal is to create food trucks because that's one of the coolest things in America right now. And it's one of my dreams. And I have to fulfill my dream to help young people to get culinary skills and maybe they'll have a food truck. But I don't just want one. I want a dozen so I can, like, put people in it and they can make the money. If their dream is culinary, I'm going to help in that. It's like we have the coffee house, the higher ground coffee house. We have five, six employees. No one's on food stamps. We live in the poorest place in America, and the coffee house is doing well. What I want to do is I want to replicate that. You ask, what am I doing? That's what I'm doing. The tribe is, like, so dysfunctional that they really don't get it. I mean, if they get $400,000, they feel like, oh, they'll get 40% of it going to their coffers. So they'll be able to run their government. I mean, like, okay, if federal dollars come in to the tribe, I mean, the tribe gets 40 plus percent. So only half of the money, basically just a little bit over half, goes to the needs of those people that are hurting. It's not a good thing. But, you know, suicide is like, it's real. I mean, like I said, it's touched my family. In the last month, it touched a family that I know, I watched her, this young lady. She just gets up and she goes out to the clothesline and she hangs herself and her boyfriend's sleeping in the house. I mean, this is real, Gary. Maybe there's not bombs like Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria. But when a young person gets up and says, you know what, life isn't getting any better. I mean, I might as well just close this out. It's not good. It is not good. And so, like, I'm very emotional about it. I mean, like I said, I mean, personally, like, within my intermediate family, I mean, I've had no one, like, commit suicide, like brothers and sisters. Just outside of that, cousins, you know, uncles, I mean, they have. If we can change tomorrow, and we can change the suicide in Native America. As you know, 
the 2016 presidential campaign season is underway. A major theme for many of the candidates, especially in the Republican Party, is personal responsibility. A candidate or voter might listen to this interview and say, why should I feel sorry for people suffering on the reservations? A person always has a choice. If someone makes a conscious decision to drink excessively or get hooked on drugs, be they American or Native American, then they have no one to blame but themselves and must suffer the consequences. It's all about personal responsibility. How would you respond? <laughs> it is. I am personally responsible. And, you know, it's like I was a strong Republican for many, many years. And then I was thinking about it after Obama, because I voted for Obama. And I'm, I'll just be straightforward. I mean, I wanted to see an African-American president because it would show the world that we are moving forward. We're progressive. But he doesn't have all my views. But neither do the Republicans. But here's the deal. Personal responsibility is a Republican ideal. I mean, it's one of the key things. That's not a Christ ideal, because Jesus said, you know what, take care of the poor. You know, take care of the, the widows and the orphans. I mean, how does a widow and an orphan take care of themselves? Because it's your personal responsibility that you get up you put your bootstraps on, you pull them up, and bang, you're good to go. I mean, that's a Republican value. It's not a Christian value. I mean, those things are at odds. And so for me, I've done my best. I mean, I've created some dreams. I've helped people. I mean, personally, like I'm trying to take care of myself emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know, as a Lakota man. And it's like, that's what I can do. And I can do that in a very positive way. I'm going to close by asking you to address what I suspect has been a topic of discussion on the reservation and within the tribal council. As you and the aforementioned report have clearly stated, many Native Americans committed suicide and continue to do so because they believe the majority of people in this country would never accept them. That being the case, is there anything you'd like to say to Donald Trump or any of the other presidential candidates regarding immigrants or immigration? Look, if you're not an American Indian, then you've come in as an immigrant or through slave trade. Donald Trump and everybody of his persuasion are immigrants. I mean, you know, and it's like, it's my personal view. Let the Mexicans in. Tear down the border. It's like, if they want to come over, come on over. You know, because they're brown skin, just like me, they're indigenous to this continent, they're in Central America. I mean, you know what? I didn't need glasses until they started creating borders, all right? I mean, fences and borders, it's like, I mean, it was just all Chimaca, which means grandmother earth. And it's like, then you start dividing things up. And I mean, the problem stems from England running out of land. Nobody could own land anymore. It was all the upper class. And so the only way you could get land is if you came over here and bond slavery and got 100 acres if you worked for seven years. And, and what they would do is they'd try to kill you so they wouldn't have to pay you your 100 acres. I mean, that's how this country started. And so, like, when people like Donald Trump, multi-billionaire, then he comes in and he starts spouting off things about Mexican-Americans or Mexicans, it's just ridiculous. It's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. And you know what? The Republican Party won't ever support him. I mean, they might have some fringe people that will, but you need to get it right. I mean, Mexican-Americans, Mexicans that are coming to America were on this continent for centuries, for centuries, before any European set foot on this land. And so, you know what? I welcome all of them. It's amazing. I mean, that's a Native American perspective. The Lakota way of living is in a circle, like the bison, American bison. The young in the middle, the elders in the outer circle around the, the young ones, the women around the elders, and then the warriors around the women and the rest of the circle. I mean, that's how we live. You know, very social, but we protect the young ones. 
And that's our Lakota way of life. And if people get that and they understand that, I mean, the government took away the, the dignity of the Lakota man, the warrior, because we no longer had to hunt. We no longer had to, like, protect our women and elders and children. It's like the government said, we'll do it. So the man has gone, he's moved away. Today, it's important that we start protecting the circle. I believe that that you're doing a great job, I mean, getting information out there. I mean, suicide is real. I mean, when it touches you, I know there are many, many people that have been touched by this. I mean, I'm very saddened by the destruction that it brings to families and, and communities. When you have four people kill themselves over a weekend, and then multiple people saying, you know what, I'm done with this. You know, it's time to make a change. I thank you once again for taking the time to be here, Pastor Matthews. I greatly appreciate it. Great to be here. And I thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the G-Man. And until next time, Stay cool, stay safe, and stay informed. Hello, my name is Jack Hearn. As a Native American and proud member of the St. Regis Mohawk tribe, I want to talk to you today about youth suicide in our communities. Suicide is a critical issue affecting Native American youth and needs to be addressed. As young people, we all face challenges and hardships in our everyday lives. We deal with pressures from society, school, family, and friends. We encounter problems like arguments with family, breakups with boyfriends or girlfriends, being teased and bullied at school, or being tempted to use drugs or alcohol. As Native people, these challenges can be much worse. We might be treated differently because of the way we look or talk, where we live, or the way we're portrayed in the movies or on TV, as sports mascots or even cartoons. For these and other reasons, life can be difficult to deal with on a daily basis. Sometimes it might feel like it's too much to handle. This can lead to feeling hopeless, wanting to give up, and thinking that there's no way your life could ever get better. An important thing to remember is that these problems don't last forever, and you don't have to face these issues alone. There is help. If you or someone you know says they feel hopeless or helpless, shows drastic changes in their mood or appearance, seems depressed or sad most of the time, withdraws from family or friends, displays a loss of interest in activities they used to enjoy, acts impulsively, abuses drugs or alcohol, or intentionally hurts themselves, reach out to a trusted adult or family member, school counselor, spiritual leader, or your local behavioral health center, or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK and speak with someone who can help. Someone is available any time, day or night, the call is free, and the service is completely confidential. Call from anywhere in the country, and you'll be connected to a caring person who will listen and can help. As Native Americans, we should be proud of who we are. Our communities have been here for thousands of years. We have endured much hardship, and yet we're still here. Our collective history represents unity, strength, and perseverance. We must continue this tradition and come together to help those in need. Remember, we have the ability to help each other live long, healthy, and happy lives. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 for more information.